Hey everybody, welcome back to Bear Ice. As usual, you know the drill. If you're enjoying this video, enjoying the channel, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. So, International de France took place this past weekend. Full disclosure, guys, I was out of town. I left town Friday night. I did not get back until late on Sunday. So to be honest, the only thing I have had time to watch is the women's event. Congratulations to the winners of the men, the pairs, and the ice dance. And this video, we're going to focus completely on the women's event. So let's get into it. Winner of the gold medal finishing first here was Miss Anna Sherbakova of Russia. To nobody's surprise, let's just be honest, I'd have been surprised if she didn't win here. Looking at the short program, it was great. I mean, no issues anywhere. All of her jumps were clean, level fours on everything. High PCS, once again, it was a much better outing than the one that she had in Italy. They have changed up her combo. I don't know if this was just for matters of keeping it clean or what, but in her first Grand Prix event, we saw she actually struggled with the triple let's triple loop combo in the short program. So I'm assuming this was just in an attempt to keep everything clean because the, the goal here was to win the gold medal and you don't, you don't want to lose any ground. So the triple let's triple toe was clean. Also, it was a much different program than the one she had in Italy. I'm not too sure if Danny G is going for like, I don't know, most choreographed programs in a half season, but Anna had a new short program here. Her original program was called The Songs of Distant Earth, and I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but apparently for whatever reason, they decided to change it up. So this new program is two selections from Dangerous Affairs and Total View. It's a lot darker and more intense, I think. I don't necessarily know that it's better than the first one. It's not worse, but it's not better either. So I don't I don't really know I don't really know what the point of the switch was. Maybe they just wanted to change it up a little bit. For me, on a style of skating is is very light. It's delicate. There's a soft touch to everything that she does. She's not a very powerful skater, really, when you look at her. She just, she seems very delicate. And I mean, that's fine. I, it's actually one of the things that I find appealing about her skating. It's just very light and graceful, and I love that. But in my opinion, anyway, I don't really think that she pulls off strong, powerful music because she's not a strong or powerful skater. And it's just, I mean, some people can pull off any kind of music, some can't. It's not a bad program. It's a good program and she skates it well. It's just, I, I don't necessarily think that it's going to help her or hurt her in any way. So I guess overall, it, it really doesn't matter. She finished a short program about a point and a half ahead of Costa Naya and set herself up very well to go ahead on and close everything out in the free skate, which she did, but not without a little hiccup first. She was supposed to open up her program with a quad Lutz. It looked like she might have slipped off of her toe pick going in, but she never really made it off of the ice. She just kind of crashed, and it sucks so bad because those kind of falls you don't really expect. They're kind of fluke falls. We've seen it happen a couple of times before. Most notable for me is just the 2008 uh, free skate at the Women's World Championships where Malasada went for a triple axle, and it was really scary because that's a forward takeoff and she just completely slipped off of her edge and just kind of went slamming into the ice and hit the boards but then got up and skated completely clean the rest of the way and funny enough that's exactly what Anna Sherbakova did you know she went down on the Lutz but was able to immediately regroup come back down and land a quad flip I was so impressed with her and then she continued, landed another three more triple triple combinations. Everything was clean. She did get a ding on her triple flip, but no other issues. You know, level fours on everything she performed. It was it was just standard Anna fighter mentality. She popped down, hopped back up, and then just got right back to business. And that is one of the things that I really love about her. She's such a fighter. She is such a competitor, and she she didn't let it derail her. Overall, it was a great performance. I'm pretty sure she will be looking to get both that quad lutz and quad flip in for the final. Uh, she's going to be going up against Valiva and is going to need every single point that she can get. But she didn't really need it here. 151.75 in the free skate, 229.69 overall. 
easy win for her. Another gold medal. I think this is her fourth straight Grand Prix gold medal, which is pretty awesome. And she has qualified for the final again. She has 30 points, 15 points from both gold medals. I'm just proud of her. It's been a it's been a good season for her. It started off a little slow, but she seems to be in a groove right now. And I'm thinking she's going to put up a really good fight at the finals. So I'm excited to see it. So once again, congratulations to Anna Sherbakova on her second gold medal and qualifying for the final. And that is where we will see her next at the Grand Prix final. Coming in second at this event, winning the silver medal, Miss Aliona Kostrunaya of Russia. I'll just say that I'm very happy for her for coming into this competition and skating so well. We all know about all the drama that went on after her last event. There were some comments made from her coaching team that didn't really sit well with a lot of people, didn't sit well with me either. I just thought that there are times when you, sh you should speak about people and what's going on with them, and other times you should just kind of keep stuff Within, within the camp, within the training camp and the stuff that Danny G said, I just felt like he he could have said that specifically to Coaster and Aya rather than to the media because then it's going to get back to her. And, you know, uh, if he meant it that way or if he meant it a different way, it always gets lost in translation. Regardless, I just didn't think it was a good look. But thankfully, she did not let it affect her too much. I felt like she was way stronger here than she was at her first event. Her short program, they decided to play it safe. And I think that was the smartest thing for her. You know, landing the triple axel right now, one, it seems to be a bit of a mental block for her. But two, it wasn't necessary here. The goal for Aliona here was just to get the silver medal. That is what she needed to do to qualify to make it to the final. And, you know, she was up against a strong field of skaters, but a field that she could beat without having to extend herself too, too far. And I feel like that was kind of the the approach, especially for the short program, and it paid off. You know, she was clean. Only thing she lost was one level in her step sequence, but everything else was nice. The double axle was beautiful. Triple Lutz was fine. The combo was beautiful. Again, this program, I just, I'm not a fan of the first half, but when she kicked it up in the second half, again, she just sparkles. She shines. It's such a that second half of the program is just what you want to see from her. She looks like she's having a great time. She's connecting with the music. She's performing. It's enjoyable. It's really enjoyable. And I think the judges really loved it as well. We saw her scores come up in the program component scores. And she was able to score very well on the technical side, even without the triple axel. So she finished this short program in second place, 76.44. Very strong score for her, and it just more proof that playing it safe sometimes is just the better way to go. The free skate was solid except for the opening jump. She went for the triple axel here. It just, the you could see the hesitation prior to her taking off. It, it, it was not happening. She landed on the quarter turn but fell on it. It was a hard fall. Half of the base value lost right there, and then, of course, the deduction for the fall but thankfully, she was able to rebound. She rebounded really well, landed everything else cleanly, no more issues, no dings, no more quarter turns. It was a clean skate for the rest of the way. She did drop another level on her step sequence, but other than that, it was a strong skate, and she posted really strong scores again. This free skate is not growing on me. I, I would love to say that it is, but it's not. I'm just kind of increasingly more and more confused by what's really going on with the rest of the packaging of this program. The dress with the armbands, with the hair, with the color in it, with the makeup under the eye. I, I'm assuming this is from some kind of reference that I'm just not getting. If by chance you know what she's going for, please leave me a message down in the comment because I'm just confused. I think she's such a pretty girl, but I, I actually found her makeup distracting this time you know last time I noticed it was just a lot of glitter under her eye for no reason I'm like okay well whatever but now it's just like a foil mask under her eye like what is going on it's a little distracting I'll just be honest I, I don't really care for it I I'm I don't like it weird costuming choices aside I thought this was a really strong outing overall for Aliona both in the short program and despite that crash and burn on the triple axle she was great in the free skate as well. 145.41 was her free skate score. 
She finished with a total score of 221.85, placing second in both segments and getting that silver medal. Earning that silver medal combined with her bronze medal from Skate Canada gives her a total of 24 points, and she has also qualified for the Grand Prix Final, which is a big deal considering a lot of people were like, eh, she might not make it. You know, she's bounced back. She has a few weeks between now and the final to see about possibly working that triple axel back into her arsenal. If not, hopefully she'll be able to just go out and give two really strong performances that she can be proud of. Either way, I'm very proud of her for bouncing back after the disappointment at Skate Canada and then all the drama after Skate Canada and coming back and putting down two strong programs here and walking away with the medal. So congrats to Aliona and like Anna, we will see her at the final as well. Coming in third, winning the bronze medal here, Wakaba Haguchi of Japan. I'm just going to say I'm freaking thrilled for her. I really am. I've been a fan of Wakaba since her junior days. I've been a fan. She's she's one of my train wreck skaters, <laughs> which I know that might make some people be like, what? But no, she can be a bit of a train wreck. And I think that's the problem because she can also be completely brilliant. And because she is equal parts brilliant and train wreck, you just never know what you're going to get. And I think that's one of the reasons why she doesn't really get the respect from the judges, not even in her own federation, because she's not a reliable skater. And when you have like a field like Japan, you're looking for reliable skaters and she just really hasn't been that. But when she's on, she's incredible. She's one of my favorite performers. She gives so much heart, so much showmanship when she performs. I absolutely love her. And I was so happy to see her skate so well on the free skate. The short program, eh, that was a different story. It was not the best. She opened up on the triple axle, single axle, no points. She did the triple lutz, triple toe combo, but it was a quarter turn, lost points there. Triple flip got hit with a ding. It was just kind of issues all the way around. She finished in sixth place. I went into the free skate just hoping that she would skate decently. It was a great performance overall. She went for that triple axle. I don't care that it was landed on the quarter turn, which it was. So she actually ended up losing about 0.23 points for it. That triple axle is gorgeous. It is so big. It's so powerful. She lands with so much ride out. It is a gorgeous jump. So they can kick rocks with that cue because that deserved all of the GOE. It was a gorgeous jump. She had two more little issues on her second triple let's triple toe combo. She landed on the quarter turn on the triple toe. And then she also got an edge call on her triple flip. So she lost some points there. But I was just happy to see her get through the program and execute everything. She is known for popping and doubling jumps in the second half of the program, which we all know popping and doubling jumps, that is the quickest way to obliterate your score because the points, you lose so many points. And it was wonderful to see her come out and really go for it. She didn't back down off of anything. And that is the kind of attack she needs moving forward. This Lion King free skate is my favorite free skate for out of all the women. Creating that moment, that really big feeling. I mean, come on, just the step sequence to the choreographic sequence in this program was perfection. I was actually really mad when I took a look at the protocol and saw that it was not straight plus fives. Like, how could you give that anything other than a plus five? It is perfect utilization of the music. She captures that moment. It was just perfect. I'm like, what? Twos? Twos and threes? Y'all are tripping. Whatever. I thoroughly enjoyed watching her perform this program. 141.04, very strong score for her. That moved her up from finishing six in the short program to finishing third in the free skate, which gave her third overall and the bronze medal. Like I said, I'm just happy for Wakaba. It's great to see her in this Grand Prix season on a high note. You know, that's the kind of momentum starting performance that you want to be able to carry into nationals where she really needs to dig deep and pull both the short and the free skate together. That has to happen for her if she's hoping to get one of those spots. And like I said, I really want to see her on that Beijing team. So again, congrats to Wakaba. I'm so proud of her. So happy to see her have that moment. 
and wishing her all of the best of luck that she can get heading into nationals next month. Finishing fourth here was Senya Sinitsina of Russia. I was a bit more careful to keep my eye on her this time around. You know, this is her second Grand Prix. Her first one was Skate America, and she surprised a lot of people. She's a very steady skater. No issues on any of her elements. She lost a little bit on her step sequence, dropping a level. But, I mean, the jumps were clean. The spins were lovely. Senya skated well here. She finished third in the short program and went into the free skate, looking pretty good as a possibility to get onto that podium. Unfortunately, she ran into some problems this time around in the free skate. She opened up well, everything was fine to begin with, but she started having issues in the second half, just several quarter turn landings on her triple lutz, triple toe, on her triple lutz, triple sow combo. She got a ding on her flip. She lost a variation on her spin. So just a lot of little things in that second half that just kind of chipped away at her score. With so many skaters having strong free skate performances, it just wasn't enough for her to hang on to her positioning. She ended up finishing sixth in the free skate, which dropped her down from third to fourth overall. Still, this was a wonderful debut for her. There are not too many debuting seniors who are able to skate well and place top five at both of their events. So congrats to her on the fourth place finish. She really did have a strong debut here on the Grand Prix this year. So hopefully she can go home and continue to work and get ready for nationals. Finishing fifth overall here was Karen Chen of the United States. It was just a much better overall performance for her than her first Grand Prix. She finished 10th at Skate Canada, and it was looking pretty damn dire for her for a minute. But thankfully, she fought back here. It wasn't her absolute best, but again, just any sign of forward momentum was what I was looking for for Karen. She had some issues in the short program, a couple of quarter turns on her jumps, you know, the Lutz and... The loop got called for a quarter turn, so she lost some points there. She also dropped some levels in her spin and her step sequence, so left a lot of points on the table, only 64, 67, so it really didn't start off looking that well. But thankfully, she fought back better in the free skate. She opened up with a really nice double axle triple toe. She had a hard fall on her triple flip, but thankfully, she rebounded and was able to come back and Skate fairly decently the rest of the way. She did have a couple more quarter turns and under rotations, but like I said, overall, it was just a stronger performance. Not what we're hoping for, but better than what we got last time. So, you know, like I said, I will take it at this point. For the U.S. women, just the field is wide open right now in terms of who is going to get those spots. You know, you have Alyssa Liu, who is skating decently, not great, but she's still outstriping pretty much everybody else in the field for the U.S. women at this point. So hopefully moving forward, Karen can build off of these performances heading into nationals and can put up a good fight and try her best to get on that Olympic team. Finishing in sixth place here, Mariah Bell of the United States. Honestly, I did not know what to expect seeing her. You know, we haven't really seen her compete since I think earlier in the summer and it really wasn't that great <laughs> in the short program here not really there she went for the triple flip triple toe it got downgraded and she fell on it which really sucks because it knocked her way way down in terms of her placement she finished 10th in the short program you know really low in components as well I actually thought her components were ridiculously low even with the fall I mean the low sevens, I ugh, whatever, I just, I can't even get into it with components. Thankfully, she was able to put up a stronger performance in the free skate and kind of renew some of my hope that she could still make it onto that Olympic team at nationals this year. No triple triple in the free skate, but she did land six triple jumps. My thought is they'll probably try to add that triple triple back in around the time of nationals because she's going to need those points on the technical side to help her get by some of the other skaters. I am really happy with both programs. I think the switch to the River Flows in U program is great. 
It's nothing spectacular, but it is a really lovely piece of music. And Mariah is a beautiful skater, so she pulls it off well. And I'm so happy she brought back the Hallelujah Free Skate. It's so gorgeous. It's just kind of iconic for her at this point. This was a solid base. You know, it wasn't her absolute best, but it was a, a good start. She competes again this week at Ross Telecom Cup. So if she can improve upon the performances that she had, I expect to see those scores go up. Best of luck to Mariah. Hopefully she can build on these performances and score well and get herself some momentum going as we head into nationals next year. That will pretty much do it for the 2021 International de France. Congratulations to all of the medalists. We've got one more event left. Ross Telecom Cup is coming up this weekend, and this is it. We've got a couple of spots to the final on the line and some major heavy hitters competing. It's going to be great. I've got a preview coming soon, so make sure to check that out. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and make sure to check back soon. Okay, bye.